French oppression continues in New Caledonia, Paris sends additional troops to the archipelago. French President Emmanuel Macron decided to send additional army units to New Caledonia, where mass protests against the colonial policies of Paris continue. As the French television channel BFM TV reports, citing sources in the Elysee Palace, Macron's decision was supported by the French Defence Council, while the number of military personnel expected to be sent to the islands in the Pacific Ocean was not specified. According to the official wording, military personnel will be used to protect public buildings. Earlier, the French authorities declared a state of emergency in New Caledonia due to mass protests by representatives of the indigenous population of the islands, the Canucks. Their speeches are related to the fact that Paris passed a law according to which non-indigenous French residents of the islands are allowed to participate in elections in this colony. To do this, it is enough to live in New Caledonia for at least 10 years. Currently, clashes between protesters against French colonialism and the police and French military continue in New Caledonia. The vast majority of indigenous people want New Caledonia to gain independence from France. New Caledonia has the richest nickel deposits, about 25% of the world's proven reserves. In addition, New Caledonia has deposits of chromium, cobalt, manganese, silver, gold, lead and copper ores. About 30 organizations active in the Pacific region issued a joint statement protesting the atrocities committed by the French government against civilians in New Caledonia. The document notes France's failure to manage the decolonization process and requires the intervention of the UN and the leaders of the Pacific countries. It is emphasized that the cause of the unrest was the attempt of the French government to change the electoral law in New Caledonia by force. In recent months, Kanak leaders have repeatedly called for the withdrawal of a proposed constitutional amendment to local election laws that threatens indigenous people's right to self-determination and jeopardizes the ongoing peaceful dialogue about the future status of the territory, the statement said. France's parliament calls to allow Ukraine to attack Russia. Jean-Louis Boulange, chairman of the French Parliament's Foreign Affairs Committee, called on Paris to lift the taboo on Ukraine's strikes on Russian territory with French weapons. According to Le Figaro, Boulange wrote a letter to the French leadership calling for the abandonment of restraint and a decision following the example of Britain which allowed Ukrainian troops to use its weapons against Russia. The time seems to have come. The right to self-defense excludes the right to inviolability of the aggressor's territory, he emphasized, adding that the change in the doctrine would put an end to the asymmetry between the aggressor and the victim. At the same time, Boulange emphasized that neither France nor other Western partners of Ukraine want to go to war with Russia. Therefore, it is not about them intervening in the theater of war, but about removing an unjustified taboo, he wrote in his letter. Since the beginning of Russia's full-scale invasion, Ukraine has been restricted in its right to use weapons received from Western countries to strike Russian territory. Usually, this restriction was explained in the West by the fact that they were giving Ukraine weapons to defend itself against Russia, not attacking it. This year, however, there have been some developments in this regard. For example, after his visit to Kyiv, British Foreign Secretary David Cameron said that Ukraine has the right to strike at Russian territory with British weapons. At the same time, the United States still adheres to its policy of restricting Ukraine's strikes against Russia. However, during a visit to Kyiv in May, US Secretary of State Antony Blinken said that Ukraine chooses how to wage war, but the US does not encourage strikes against Russia. The outcome of war will be decided on land, expert on the destruction of Russian Black Sea Fleet. Even after the sinking of the last ship of the Russian Federation in the Black Sea, the outcome of the war will be decided on land. Colonel of the Reserve of the Armed Forces of Ukraine, military expert Petra Chernik, said this on air at the Information Marathon. In particular, he was asked what the destruction of the Russian minesweeper Kovrovets and the possible defeat of the small missile ship Cyclone meant. We are achieving strategic parity with a state that was considered to have the best fleet in the Black Sea, but we, Ukrainians, did not have such a fleet at all, Chernik said. He noted that Ukrainian small unmanned attack systems pay off because they can actually destroy enemy fleets. At the same time, according to him, in connection with the attack on Sevastopol, where the cyclone ship was possibly hit, the situation looks like, theoretically, ATA CMS missiles were struck. 
But we must remember that even if the last tin can, which is part of the Black Sea Fleet, sinks, the outcome of the war will be decided exclusively on land. If it is indeed confirmed that we defeated the small missile ship of Project 22800 Karakurt, then this is really good news, because it is a carrier of calibers, and calibers are quite a serious weapon, Chernik noted. The expert noted that given the fact that the enemy is especially sensitive to attacks on civilian infrastructure with caliber cruise missiles, the destruction of one such ship means minus eight missile launchers. But we remember that the total number of carriers that can carry out attacks with these missiles is still somewhere in the range of 20, and the most sensitive are the Varshavyanka class submarines, which can carry out attacks from an underwater position, Chernik said. He admits that the Kronos submarines developed in Ukraine may in the future become the first hunters who will be able to hunt Russian Varshavyanka class submarines. At the same time, Chernik added that the Russians have two more heavy frigates, Burevestnik at sea, and up to 15 small missile ships, such as Karakurt, Buyan M. Vasily Baikov and the like. He believes that the war will not reach the point where classic ship-to-ship -ship naval battles will take place at sea.